Hi, ladies. Can you hear me? I want to make sure everybody could hear me. Can everyone hear me? Everyone's here? Yes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate that you're here. Um, I'm so happy that we're able to get together. Other, other. Give me one second. I'm just adjusting my volume here. One second. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, amazing. So Baruch Hashem, we're zochet to be together here today. Uh, for some of us, it's the end of the fast here in Israel. And for some of us, it's the middle of the day or early morning for some. Shuvah um, a very special day. A day where we were able to connect to Kadosh Baruch Hu and be able to give back to him a little bit. Really want to talk about the power of today. Let's talk about a little bit of the history of what happened today and then see how we can make a difference. You know, I, I titled the the year, how do we make a difference and bring us home? Because really these next three weeks are really, you know, weeks of Dean, they're weeks of you know, difficulty, challenges for Klal Yisrael. There's so much that has happened in our history during these three weeks. And it's really, really challenging because every year we unfortunately hear more and more things happening. And we want this year, the Bezlat Hashem, we should be zochet to the Geula Shlema. We should be zochet to Yeshuot for our Am And this year should be dedicated to the Refua Shlema for all those who need Yeshuot, Refuot, Bezlat Hashem. Included in them is Mayam Badevar Adasa, Yosef Azriel Ben Chaya Michal, Yevke Bat Chesiba, Yitvach Shach Olam Re Yisrael. And Bezlat Hashem, we should also Yeshuot and the Geula Kruba B'Meira B'Amenu. And the spook of our learning here today. Thank you so much for joining. So I, you know, I wanted to talk about what is it that we could do to make changes? What can we do to have effective changes in our lives that are going to make a difference? Let's talk about first what happened. What is it that happened during this time of Shiva Salbet Tammuz? It was the beginning of the three weeks, the beginning of judgment. And there are things in history that actually happened that we're commemorating today. One of them started in the time of Tanakh. Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchot, we know. And when he saw the Jewish people worshiping of Odazara. And we know that the next thing that we're mentioned, that's mentioned is that during the time of Bavel, we have the siege, we had a siege, we had a, you know, they surrounded the walls of Yerushalayim, the Jews were forced to, um, to, uh, to cease offering the kolbanot, the kolban tamid. Um, unfortunately, they were lacking in sheep, they were lacking in things at that time. It's a very sad, very difficult, challenging time for Klai Yisrael. During um, the Bayit Shani, we have a, a postamus burnt, the Holy Torah, we have um, the Choban Yerushalayim, Choban Chomot Yerushalayim, the walls of Yerushalayim were breached during Choban Shani, and they set up an idol actually in the temple. Quite like things that are like, whoa, like mind boggling. How could this be a place of Kedusha? You know, I was just in the Kotel Tunnel and I was able to witness and see certain things that even, you know, for many, many years now they're discovering more and more, they're building and they're uh, digging and they're going to have a connection to the tunnel towards to a new building, Moreshet uh, Beta, uh, I think Moreshet Kotel, maybe it's called. There's a new building right behind the Kotel Plaza, and um, they're digging underneath there. It's going to be a connection to where the old bridge is. 
it's really incredible what's out there. And um, I was looking at these walls, these ruins, and really they're not ruins. They're like places where people live. This is where everyone lived in Yerushalayim. This is a place where they congregated. There was a place that they did their shopping. They brought the korbanot. They were mikvaot that they found there. Incredible, incredible things, you know, we see in the Yerushalayim. And these are not ruins. These are not ancient. You know, just looking today, there was a video with uh, Shlomo Katz and um, um, Etl Goldwicht and um, Rabbi Klein, and they were talking about you know the the you know the place, the area where the Kedushav of Yerushalayim was, and they were walking and they're saying, this is still alive today. And we're able to be zoche to witness it, and there's lot of soon we're going to be witnessing the rebuilding of it. How is that going to happen? So let's talk about how it was destroyed. We know that it was destroyed because of the three cardinal sins, Sina, Shukut Amin, Avodah Zara, and Gilui Arayot, right? Immoral relations. And we know that the second Beit HaMikdash was also destroyed because of Sina Atchinam. There was baseless hatred. And Kali Yisrael were not on the level that they should have been on. And they were warned several times again and again. And so many things that they had were taken away. And it should have been like, come on, let's go. Let's, let's fix this. But they were so entrenched, entrenched in, in the Tum'ah. How are we going to be able to bring that back? How are we going to be able to see the rebuilding of our home? A place where we were able to bring gifts to HaKadosh Baruch Hu freely. A place where we were able to visit and thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. A place where we were able to connect to Hashem and feel his the Gdusha and feel, you know, the Gdusha of, 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 the, of the beautiful structure that we were looking at. Now we only have a wall that was surrounding it. You know, that's the only thing that we have today to go and pray by the Kotel Baruch Hashem Zochet, to go last night, to go and pray and to ask Hashem to rebuild it. You know, I was, I was so grateful because just a short while ago, I was there and it wasn't like it was today. All the people coming from around the world now again, just during Corona, it was empty. It was empty. I was able to go and I saw the kota empty and I was crying. Like Yomiyahu said, badad. how could it be that Yerushalayim sits alone, so alone? Nobody's visiting. There was one mincha. The men were running to one mincha. I was sitting and I was crying. Hashem, how could it be? I just came to I said, oh, look at this. Your shalim is empty. The kotel is empty. And last night, and every time I go since then, I say thank you, Hashem, that we have beautiful kotel amaravi, at least that. And we're able to come here now freely. No masks, no mechitzot, nothing separating us. But unfortunately, there's still a separation. Unfortunately, there's still something missing because we don't have the rebuilding of the beautiful structure that everyone around the world wanted to come and join and see. Everybody would come and congregate and look at the Beit HaMikdash and say, wow, look at the glory, look at the beauty of Hashem. And we don't have that today. We still just have the remnants. Why? What is it? What does the Kadosh Baruch Hu want from us? So one of the things that was taken away was the korban tamid. And we're told, korbanot, today, instead of korbanot, we offer lip service. We're able to daven and talk to Hashem and connect with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. We're able to have three times a day, as we have in the Shemona Esther, but there's other times where Nachman teaches us we have to do it with the dut. We have to sit and talk to Hashem. Or Shem Shempikas would say, he's our father. Just talk to him. Talk to him like he's your father. Tati, Abba, please help us, hear us. Do we talk to our father like he is our father? So these are the times we set up Dean. And really, we know that the world cannot exist only on Dean. Hashem created the world that there should be chesed and should be rachami. And when we talk to Hashem and we beg him, we know for the Ashkenazim, we say today, Avinu Malkeinu and Atfila. And we say, Avinu Malkeinu, we're beseeching Hashem's rachamim. How can we say Avinu Malkeinu on the day that there's Dean, there's judgment, that we're being judged? How? Because Hashem is an Av Rachaman. And our tafkid is to be able to act in the same way with Rachamim. 
That's what Hashem wants from us. Because there's, there's deen, because there's so much judgment, Hashem wants us to turn and flip that around and be able to come bechesed uberachamim and to be able to love one another and be able to see the good in one another and be able not to judge one another. And getting back to you know what we were saying before about the korban tamid, so we didn't have the korbanot tamid. Every day we were able to bring the korban. So the Ram, the Rambam tells us that there's a way for us to be able to flip the scale, to tip the scale in this world. And one of the ways to be able to do that is to be able to create a platform for ahava, a platform for love, for chesed. How do we do that? How do we show Hashem how much we love him? By loving the creations that he put into this world. Hashem put all of us in this world and we each have our tafkid. We each have our role and we don't understand, you know, how can this person do this to me? When somebody wrongs us, how can he do that to me? And automatically, what do we do? We go into judgment. What? She said this. She's like that. She's like this. She's so nasty. She's so mean. And we start judging and judging and judging. And instead of looking inwards and saying, oh, maybe there's something I did wrong. Or maybe I could think positively. Maybe there's something that she's going through that she has, you know, in her life right now. And that's why she's acting that way. We turn, we turn things around and we think of oh, the negative. How many times do we start and, stay and think, you know, maybe there's something I did. Maybe I affected her negatively. Maybe I didn't say things right. Or maybe I could think what's something going on maybe in her life. There's a whole story in the Gemara of somebody who was judging somebody favorably. And every time he did something to him to wrong him, he basically judged him favorably. And every time he made an excuse. And at the end, I don't remember all the examples, but at the end, he said to him, what did you think when I told you this? And what did you think when I told you that? Like, I didn't let him borrow something. What did you think? And Everything that he thought of was exactly what happened. Meaning to say, when he put in his mind to judge that person favorably, that was the truth. That was the emit. That was what actually happened. Our mind, when we put our mind into something and when we think this couldn't have happened for no reason, there's something going on here. When we think that way, we cause, we cause that to come into fruition we cause our reality to happen positive thinking right positive thoughts also when we create positive thoughts that's something that's going to come to be the more we think positively so the Rambam tells us how are going to we going to be machria the kaf how are we going to tip the scales to allow Hashem not to judge us and you know what he says like I mentioned ahava ahava tisrael this is one of the ways when we're done, when we don't go into the judgment, when we think positively about the other person, when we think what is it that the other person maybe could be going through, and maybe I don't understand, and maybe it's challenging for me right now, and I'm just judging that person because I'm in a bad place right now. When we do that, we are not only doing it for us, what we're doing is we're tipping the scale for Kol Am Yisrael. We're actually being machria, the kaf. We're tipping the scale, Rambam tells us. When I do a mitzvah, when I do a chesed, when I learn Torah, when I say a certain tefillah, tefillah is a little easier because you feel like you're davening for the klal. A lot of the tefillah is in the shan rabim, it's in plural. But when you do an act of, of chesed or when you do a mitzvah, why is it that when I'm, you know, doing this act right now, why is it, how is it going to affect somebody in, you know, in Hawaii, in Europe? What are you telling me that's going to affect? So what are you talking about? Yes, we have to believe that every act that we do, everything that we do in this world can make a difference and be able to be machir de kaf. And you know, we're causing, every time we do that, it's like a ripple effect. We're causing more chesed to be done, more mitzvot to be done. You know, Chabad is all over the world. They're constantly putting on tefillin on this one and, you know, helping that one and brit milah. And no matter where they are, no matter who the person is, there's no judgment. Why can't we be that way? 
Why can't we love another person that way and not be in judgment? If we think of all the hundreds of thousands of mitzvot that we can do just by judging favorably, just by performing a mitzvah and thinking of another, this is the other thing. We need to have kavanah, that when we do a mitzvah, that we are able to have an effect on the klal. I make a roshem. I make a difference. Rabbi Nachman mentions that one of the issues with Kali Yisrael today, one of the things that we all suffer from, is this midah of shiflut, that we feel like we're like lowly, we're nothing. We don't count. We don't matter. What I do, who cares? Who's looking? Who's listening? It's not true. We matter. I matter. Whatever I say, whatever I do, how I'm going to react or not react to my spouse, to my sibling, to my child, is going to cause a ripple effect that's going to grow and grow. And we're going to be able to cause other people to also be affected. We're going to cause other people to do mitzvot. We're going to cause other people to be judged favorably. Whatever I do makes a Roshem, makes a difference. And this is what the Rambam teaches us, that we do mitzvot and we learn Torah. We should not just think I'm doing it. Yes, L'Shem Shemaim, I'm doing it for the sake of Hashem. I'm doing it for my brother. I'm doing it for my sister. I'm doing it for Kalal Yisrael. And believe in yourself. Believe in your acts. Believe in what you're doing, that it makes a devotion. That when I am smiling, I'm affecting others around me. Rabbi Tanyang Rice would say, you know, somebody came to ask her, a university student came to ask her, where does your smile begin? Does it begin on the inside or does it begin on the outside? And she said, very lovingly with her warm smile, she would say, Mamala. She said, your smile can't begin on the inside. Everybody has tzarot. Everybody has trouble. Everybody has difficulty. Everybody has challenges. We all are going through something. But your smile always begins on the outside. Yes, yeah, sometimes it may begin on the inside. But when you put on a smile, it says, Achare ha'peulot ba'im ha'regashot. After the action comes the feeling. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like smiling. I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like today was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to stay in bed. It's a fast day. But you know what? I push myself. I'm like, I'm giving the shoe. I was like, yes, today. Come on, give the shoe. I'm like back and forth. I'm like, no, it's a fast day. I just want to like relax, you know, and cook for my family, whatever. But I said, you know what? You never know who it is that you can affect. And my husband should be well. Also put encouraged me. He said, do it, just do it. And Baruch Hashem, I'm happy that you're all join me today. We don't know what we say, how we act, what we do. What a Roshim, what an impression it makes. You think of the women in the Midbar. Look at what impression that they made. They came with copper mirrors. They came with copper mirrors and they wanted to be part of the Mishkan. Those copper mirrors were not stopped. They came with their jewelry, actually, right? That ended up becoming the copper mirrors. Those copper mirrors were not um, stamped copper mirrors. They weren't stamped, uh, you know, a piece of material. They were kedusha. They had kedusha. They had holiness to it. And we know that that's what we used for the kiyo. The kiyo that was used to wash the hands and the feet of the kohanim who did the avodah in the mishkan. So is that stam and act? They just brought their jewelry. They just, you know, they made, they brought their copper mirrors. What, what, what is that? What are you talking about? No, it was the kavana that they wanted so much to partake in the mishkan. And they gave something that was of such, such significance. Really, it's called in vain. It's thing you think it's like in vain. It's nothing. It's like something that's like with Tuma, right? No, no. Hashem said, take, take this. And this was used for the Kwani. Interestingly enough, this last week's parasha, these women are defended by Pinchas. When Pinchas sees these beautiful copper 
the copper mirrors and what the women brought to be Mekadesh, to bring Kedusha. Unfortunately, the men now were sinning and were immoral. And Pinchas, it says, that Pinchas was, it was a cry that was let out. Rebbe Yamima brings this, and she says, and Pinchas was defending the honor of Yamod Pinchas. He stood and he judged and the plague was stopped. And it doesn't talk about just Stam his Rama that he used his spear. It says Rama is also Rama, 204, Rama's 248 limbs and organs. And he was Hashem. I don't want this to happen. I don't want this pain among my people. And what concerned them is the emotional health of women. These women who so much dedicated themselves to Kedusha and Tara and being part of that. And look what happened. They're weeping, they're crying because at the entrance of the tent stood the fountain that, made, that was made of the copper mirrors that was assembled by the women and contributed by them. And the mirrors they were using to maintain their appearance for their, for their husbands for the sake of loyalty, for the sake of Kedusha, for the sake of maintaining Kla Yisrael. How can they be repaid now with such treachery, he says, with such, you know, immoral acts? And Pinchas gets up and he defends, it says that the women's honor, the honor of the Shekhinah herself. And his message is, listen, it might look tempting. It might be, there's so much boundlessness Right, and after feeling stifled, whatever you want to call it, but Pinchas warns us in the end always, always, the women are the ones that pay the price for this. And now, when the walls, walls are breached, so to speak, it says. You're set up to pay the price. Shall we below remains without a wall? He says, defending a woman is the correct attitude. We women, we hold such power. We hold such, there's so much that we have to offer. And yet we think, hmm, who am I? What, what am I gonna do that's gonna make a Roshem? It's gonna make a difference. What, just because I'm gonna say or not say that thing, because I'm gonna compliment. I'm going to hold myself back because I'm going to say, oh, if I don't feel like davening, I daven, it makes a difference. 100%. What your children see, your neighbors, your friends, when Hashem sees this act that's so tremendously difficult for you and you do it anyway, we, the women, hold a tremendous cross. We are the leaders. We hold the M of the Emunah. We are holding on to that which is going to be able to bring us the yearning for the gilula with our emunah, our bitachon, but be able to trust in Hashem. So how do we go about creating this avat Yisrael? We spoke about understanding and looking at people with a positive eye. During this time, um, this month, we're told that the, the, the one thing that we're going to be judged, actually that we are so unfortunately failed in, the miraglim, and that we were judged with is because we didn't use our eyes and our ears effectively. And so we, this is something that we have to be metaken during this time, is to use our eyes to look favorably at others, to judge favorably others, and to talk positively, to speak positive speech. But you know who it begins with? It begins with ourselves. It begins with me. Like I mentioned, for me, for me, Hashem created this world? Yes. When Hashem gives you something, it's a gift. How are you using it? Are you taking it and saying, here, I, I don't want to, I'm not worthy. No, thank you. Rabbi Nachman says, we all think we're like nothing. And our whole essence is to be able to climb up to mochin de gadlut, feel the greatness of who we are. If we only would realize who we are and the power that we have and the ability that we have with our speech, with our actions, with our kindness, with being positive. And the more we do this, the more we work on this midah of correcting our eyes, different from the meraglim, because we know the meraglim spoke negatively. They looked at Eretz Yisrael negatively, even in Echa. 
the ayin and the pe are interchanged, right? Usually ayin comes before pe. They put their mouth before their eyes. They already spoke negatively before even thinking positively. Let us try to look at something that goes wrong today or tomorrow or this week and say, hmm, I wonder, I, let me think how I can think of this in a positive light. Maybe this happened because of this. Maybe she had a bad day. Maybe he didn't understand what I meant, right? And let's not speak out. You know, I caught myself a few times this Shabbat when I was like just saying things without even thinking. Like how many times do we think about what we want to say? I don't know that I always do that, right? We blur things out. If we would just think about how to say something or maybe like bounce it off someone before we tell somebody something if we're upset, right? That's some putting our, our thoughts, our eyes before our mouth. Like think about it, absorb it, understand it. Maybe I was wrong and not she was wrong. This is what we have to do. The whole point of a ta'anit, the whole purpose of having the fast today is you know what to do? Not to just not eat and not drink, but it's in order to make you feel a little differently. You're not so full. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about you know, eating because you're like feeling weak. But the whole reason is to think about, wait, why am I fasting? Oh, all these tragic things happened to Kali Oh, maybe I need to change. Chuva. The whole purpose is to do chuva. Hashem wants us to come closer to him. And tshuva does not have to come out of yirah, out of fear. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared what Hashem is going to do to me because I didn't do that mitzvah or I did, didn't do that mitzvah correctly. But the purpose is to think about how can I make that better? How can I make this for Hashem? How can I make this for Kla Yisrael? It's not just about me. And what this person did to me, we personalize things a lot of times that we think, oh, how could they hurt me? How could she say that to me? How can he do that to me, right? Don't personalize it and think maybe a way that I can be positive in the way I speak. Maybe take upon yourself to learn. It's actually a school now. Rabbi Sinkanievsky, Allah Shalom, would say it's a school now for Yeshua to learn two alachot of Shemilat Hashem. This is a good time to do it. Let's start. Let's start putting our eyes first and seeing things in a positive light and not just voicing what we have to say. Let's do tshuva, mi'ahava, that we want to come close to you, Hashem, because we know, Hashem, you, you love us. You love me, Hashem. You want what's best for me, Hashem. You know what's good for me, Hashem. You know, and we have to think in a positive light in that way and understand that we have self-worth. That what I say matters, what I do matters, who I am matters. We're so down on ourselves. Oftentimes, you know, do you ever catch yourself saying, oh, I'm so stupid. I could have done that. Oh, I should have done this. I shouldn't have done that. How many times do we say these things a day? Try to mark it down and maybe think, how can I be more positive today? How can I, maybe instead of saying, how could I have done that? Why didn't I do that? Think of something positive that you did do or turn it into something positive. If you just thought that, change that thought and make it a positive one. And when we create positive thoughts, positive thoughts bring positive energy and we end up doing positive acts. And when we think negatively, we think of ourselves as lousy. We don't think that we're capable. I can't do this. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to succeed. We should take that word out of our dictionary. There's no never. You know, in the Hebrew dictionary, there's no shouldn't, couldn't, and wouldn't. My friend, Sarah Liba, she has an amazing song. Shouldn't, couldn't, would have, should have, could have, would have. You know, like we always say that. There's no such word than the Hebrew dictionary. No should have. You did it? Okay. Now what do you do better? To chupa? Fix it. What can I do to make a change? How am I going to make myself better? I, I said something negatively to her. Apologize. It's very hard for us to apologize. It's very hard for us to take and assume responsibility. 
But a person has to understand that we have tremendous kochot. And Rabbi Nachman talks about this, that we have to not feel this shiflut, we have to feel the gadlut. Gadlut de mochin, understanding what you do matters. Know who you are. Look at the positive, make a list of positive things that you've done today. Try to be positive so you can be positive around others and speak positively. Try to say positive statements, positive affirmations. That's some of the things I'm working on. It's just making positive affirmations in our mind. When you make positive affirmations and we say things positively, we create positive energy. We need to work on that. We need to believe in ourselves and we need to know that really Hashem loves us. In a few more weeks, we're going to be reading Banim Atem Hashem Elokechem. We're going into Av. Hashem is Av Rachaman. Now we're in Tammuz. We're in a time of Din. You know, in the time of the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash and Zizah Av. Av is the time of Av Rachamin. Hashem, our loving father. That even though he destroyed the Bet HaMikdash, he didn't take out his anger on us. He took it on, off, on, on wooden stones, right? Thank you, Abba. Let's be grateful. Let's understand that Hashem loves us and that we have so much good and we have to thank Hashem for that good and we have to be positive in our head and we have to be positive about ourselves and just work on these positive affirmations, work on speaking in a positive way and it will create, help us to create positive energy, positive thoughts. And hopefully, Bezlat Hashem, you know, will understand that this is part of a taf- our tafkid. And the Rambam says that this is like a person has a tafkid. Every person has a mission. Every time we do something, we create malachim. And we have a mission in this world. Do we want to look back and say, hey, look what I did. Look what I accomplished. This is my tafkid. Or do we want to just wallow in our misery of what I didn't do, what I could have done, what I should have done? Right? We want to be able to look back and say, Baruch Hashem, this is what I did, I accomplished. And small things, we're not talking about major things, I wrote a book, you know what I'm saying? Like not everybody does that. But the small acts are really tremendous, tremendous acts. When we do one mitzvah, it creates a ripple effect. And we don't even understand how that is going to bring the geula. We don't understand it. But really what it means is that we create more ahava. Ahava is the name of Hashem. We're bringing Hashem's holiness, Kedusha, into this world. The more Ahava, the more we spread Ahava, the more we spread love, the more we think positively about one another. We create this positive energy, this Ahava together. We're distancing away from the Sin Atchina, which is why we today are mourning, which is why we are crying today. And you know, you know they say like, I remember the, there was a boy that cried. I don't remember if it was a chazanish. I don't remember who it was. His father told him, don't cry for no reason. Like, use your tears to cry for something. At least cry for the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. You know, like, it's okay to cry. We have reasons to cry. There's so much suffering. There's so much sickness. There's so many sawat that Klai Yisrael are going through. Utilize our tears for someone else, not just for ourselves. That's also showing ava. That's also showing we care. Let's make an effort to make an, to do an act to help us, to help another, excuse me, to help somebody who's in need, somebody who might not have someone calling them. Just give them a good word, a positive word. You don't even need to do much. You know, you want to invite them over. That's great. You want to make them a, a nice dish, dish for Shabbat, uh, you know, cook them a, a nice meal or a, a cake. That's even greater. But even today, picking up the phone and hearing someone's voice, you know, somebody called me the other day and speaking to them so long. It was like so nice to hear from them. Wow, a voice. Like I get to hear someone. It's not just looking at a text, you know, and it makes a roshem. And we have, to be- we have to believe that what we do makes a roshem. A roshem is an impression. We actually make an impression in the acts that we do. Uh, I once had a student called me from like years ago and she wanted to thank me for something I did. I was like, well, I don't remember doing that. But I obviously made an impression. I made a washroom on her. And we do this every day. Little acts. You know, it says that uh, if, uh, if Moshe would have known, um, I think that was Aaron. If Aaron would have known what it was like the way he greeted Moshe Rabbeinu, right? He would have made a whole parade, right? If, 
Boaz would have known what it meant to make this meal for Ruth. Oh, he would have brought, you know, not just, you know, chitim, it was a whole meal. If Reuven would have known what it was like what he did, you know, and all these acts of, that are written down, if they would have known, oh, so then they would have done it even better. What, what is that? What do you mean, if they would have known? So what's coming to teach us is, if we would realize that our small act of bringing somebody flowers, baking somebody a cake, calling somebody on the phone, forgiving someone, not judging that person. If we would have known after 120, we're going to look at the book, Eliyahu and is going to write each about book about each one of us. And if we realized those little acts that we did, I mean, such a Roshem, that they were written down. It was something that was written down. Whoa, we would have done it with much more passion. We would have done it with much more simcha. We would have done it with much more energy positivity. So why do we have to wait to look back, right? That's what it teaches us. Let's not have to wait to look back to know that what I make, that what I do makes a difference. Let me do it with the most energy that I can. And of course we can't do this for everything that we do, but take one mitzvah and put your all into it. Have kavana, be positive, think positive, Put on a smile, do it with energy. And this is your, going to be your mitzvah. This is going to be your particular thing that you're going to be taking. This is like the korban tamid that we're missing now. We're going to bring our korban tamid. We're going to try to be matmid, matmidim. You know, matmidim, masmidim. People who sit and learn, learn, right? Every day. We're going to be matmid in a particular mitzvah. And Chazal tells us you take one, one mitzvah. Don't think you have to now take all 613 mitzvot and perfect everything, or even 20. <laughs> like, we're human. Let's start with one. One act leads to another act. One mitzvah brings gorer mitzvah, right? Brings us to another mitzvah. And these small acts, davening for someone, take on a name of somebody to daven for. You know, what a good feeling is that you daven for someone, then you hear the Yeshua, you know, I daven for you. I had you in mind. A friend of mine who got engaged, remember, I told her, I was like, you know, I was stopping for you. She's like, really? Wow, thank you so much. So that's what Hashem wants. Little small acts. But it starts with us. It starts with me. Like we said, Hashem created this world for me. He wants me to be better me and think positively about me. And when I think positively about myself, speaking to myself as well, I'm able to give. I'm able to be positive. I'm able to create more energy, more koach, and, and be able to do for others in a different way. In a different way. Hashem wants me to really think about today, especially today, ladies. It's Shiva Sabatamuz. All the things that happen. Let me just take a charge here. All the things that happen to Klai Yisrael over the history of time. We're reading about it, we're learning about it, maybe you watch some, you know, some shiurim about it. But, okay, how does that relate to me? I can be machriya the kaf. I can tip the scale. What I do makes a difference. I have to think today, to be mehalher b'tshuva, to think about how am I gonna come back to Hashem? How am I gonna be closer to Hashem? How am I going to bring my korban to Hashem? What's my tefillah today? What is it I'm going to change? One change, one mitzvah. How am I going to give it my all? How am I going to perfect it? And then the other major factor, which we didn't spend a long time talking about. One of the reasons they brought korbanot was as toda, as thanks to Hashem. So we complain all day long and we're critical. How many times are we grateful? Yesterday I found a parking spot. It's Motei Shabbat. I'm going to Keva David. Where am I going to park? I'm going to the Kotel. Everyone's going. There's tons of people. I didn't think that way. I said, Hashem, you're going to help me find the spot. Baruch Hashem, I got the spot. And I said, Thank you, Hashem. Recognize the good and thank Hashem for it. 
you can say mizmor tada. I say it like five times a day, sometimes more. Thank you, Hashem. Actually, more than five times a day because I'm part of a nishma group and we repeat it. Thank Hashem. Be grateful to Hashem. There's so much that we have in this world. There's so many luxuries that we have in this world. There's so much abundance that we have. How many dips you have on your table? How many different kinds of flowers do we have? You know, we buy for Shabbat. The dishes that we have, the, the different, you know, decorative things that we have in our home, you know, different sets of linen, different sets of dishes. And, you know, we can go on and on. Do we actually stop and say, thank you, Hashem, for those things? Stop being critical. Start being more, more in gratitude. And even when things are not so great, Rav Arush speaks about this in his book, when we thank Hashem, right? In advance, we even thank Hashem before the, we get the resolution, before we get the Yeshua. Thank Hashem. We're gonna, it's going to bring us to the Geula. It's going to bring us to the Yeshua. Say thank you. Even when you have this Sarah in your life, this child's giving you issues. Thank you, Hashem, for this child that you gave me. Thank you, Hashem, this child is healthy. Thank you, Hashem, I know you're going to take care of him. I know you're going to help me with this issue. Even before it gets resolved. You know why? Because Hashem gave you the schut to have this child. Hashem gave you the schut of having something, it's a schut, it's a merit, okay? Whatever issue you have, whether it's in shalom bayit, whether it's with friendship, Hashem gave me this opportunity. We have to look at things as an opportunity. How am I utilizing it? Do I thank Hashem for it? Even when things are rough, when I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, I don't have purpose, I don't have meaning, I can't, I don't know what you want from me, Hashem. Where is this going? I don't understand. Where is this problem going to lead me to? Do I have to understand? No. Thank you, Hashem, that you brought me this particular issue. There's something I'm supposed to learn from this. I don't know what it is. Please, Hashem, guide me. Be in gratitude. It's hard. It's really avodah. But our whole life is avodah. That's what Hashem wants from us. We're not here to rest. <laughs> You know, today, maybe you got to rest a little bit. I don't know. It's a fast day. <laughs> but we're here to do work. We're here to do the service of Hashem. And what does Hashem want more? And to love him and to love his people and to love yourself. So thank you so much for letting me share. I hope I gave you a little bit of something that you can take today. For some of us, we're ending the fast soon. And for some of us, you're still in the middle of it. Bezrat Hashem, you should have an easy and meaningful fast. And it should bring you a little more clarity as to who you are, what you are, what you have to offer. And see that really you can make a difference. You can cause the scale to tip. You can cause the gilulat to come. We, the women, have this power. I speak about it all the time because I feel it. We brought the last kibuna we're going to bring bishut nashim tzitkaniyot I'm not the one who says it because I'll tell us right bishutam nigal bishutam nigael and the merit of the women we're going to be redeemed every time you do an act of chesed of kindness of judging favorably of being kind to yourself of not being critical of looking positively and thinking positive statements thinking positive thoughts to create positive energy you're bringing the Gilma. And if you think that way, I think it'll change our you know, ability to see the world in a different light. If we're more positive, we create positivity. Let's bring it on. Let these three weeks not be deen. Let them be rachamim. Let them be ahava. Let them be filled with simcha. Let us fill the world with kdusha and ahava. Because when we do that, we're creating the positive energy to bring us, Bezrat Hashem, the Tisha B'Av is going to be a day of Moed, of Yom Tov, of Simcha, of rejoicing. We have to believe it. We have to believe it. We have to pray for it. And we can bring it. We have to believe that we can bring it. Let's all work hard today to think of something, one thing. Don't start conquering the world. Oh, today that's it. I'm going to be the best person in the whole world. One thing. 
one positive act, how are you going to perfect it? How are you going to energize it? And be able to Be'ezlat Hashem see Yeshuot for you, for your family, for Kla Yisrael. May we merit the Geula. Bimhera be'amenu. Amen. Selam. When we come together and again, it should be for the Geula, for, for the dancing, for rejoicing. Um, I welcome you to join me. Be'ezlat Hashem, I hope to start a series of Shi'urim. I'm going to be posting them. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to put my uh, phone number in the chat, my WhatsApp, my email. <laughs> So you can uh, reach out to me if anybody has any questions or comments. I'd love to hear from you. You can unmute yourself. I don't think I locked it. Anybody have any questions? Aaron, it's so good to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> Good to see you too, Angela, right? Yeah, Zelda, yeah, yeah. Angela, Zelda, how are you doing? So good to see you. I need to, to hear from you. you. How's your daughter year. doing? Uh, it's not good. Tell me your name again. Amen, thank you. This, this is... Vega. Vega. But Zelda. Zelda. Amen. Everybody should have whatever they need. Hashem should answer them and give them b'shefa, bracha, slacha, everything good. Amen. And please join me. Mizrat Hashem will start giving shiurim. And if anybody would like to dedicate a shiur, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you, and uh, I'd love to continue learning together. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining me. May you have an easy, meaningful fast. Anybody have any other questions? Amen. I see some familiar faces. Thank you so much for coming on. Call to everybody. Thank have you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Yeah. Thank you. Mean, thank you. So great to connect.